Hey, everyone. So some of you may have seen this today on Twitter, right? T-Pain, the artist T-Pain, got himself a bar, right? He's going to be a restaurateur. He's going to pour drinks, pour shots, show everyone, uh, you know, good chili flingers and nachos on the weekends or whatever they got on the menu. Who knows? Maybe I'll go check out the place. But what I did definitely check out was this tweet, because many of you sent it to me. It is, of course, a the owner of a new establishment holding up a key. And a lot of people said, oh, man, don't do that. People can get your key bidding. And, you know, it set off a cool discussion on Twitter. If you've never seen this, I figured I would just show you how easy this actually is. I've talked about it in plenty of con talks and other things that I'll link below. But here we have his key, right? We're going to turn it around, get it a little bit lined up so that the bidding flows in an order that we would normally express from the bow of the key out to the tip, because this is a shoulder-stopped key. And once we have this image, we can import our key size and key measurement gauge, which is, of course, comically too high resolution. Uh, this is a tool that I have made, and you know all my key gauges and such are published on my GitHub. I've made this to use mostly with very high-resolution photos that you would either be taking a close-up picture on a desk or a table, or maybe you've got a really nice you know, prime lens or a zoom lens, and we talk about that in our surveillance class. But if you don't have a high-resolution photo, well, you've got to play this game. You've just got to scale things up and down. We've scaled up the key, got a little bit blurry. We're going to scale down our gauge, making it a little bit blurry. We want those black outer lines to be bounding the edges of the key blade, the, the key blade as if it were not cut, a blank key blade. But then our scale lets us just look right down each bidding. The first one was nice and crisp, easy to see. The second one, a little bit questionable here. I still think that's a gray line. That's another odd number. That looks like a three cut. Another deep cut here. What is that? Is that a blue line or a gray line? That looks kind of closer to the blue. That might be an even cut. That might be a six in this next position. You might be saying, how do I know it's a Schlage key? I couldn't tell from the bow of the key. It was a neuter bow. Well, I can tell from the warding. I can easily see that Schlage warding that we're looking at on this side. What I can't easily see is this next position. Now we're right up in the, the shiny metal keychain that's hanging behind this key, that muscle man. We're right up against his bright, shiny junk or something. But I'm going to hazard a guess. That looks like it might be a depth of four. The one out at the tip, I really like. I'm pretty sure that out at the tip, you can see where the shadow of the keychain stops. That looks like a three cut to me. But if you're ever not sure, you know, take good notes. You can also adjust different lighting levels if you know about image editing tools so you can tweak your brightness, tweak your exposure. There's a lot of Lightroom or Photoshop skill that you can bring into all kind of image editing. Sometimes it helps in these circumstances. Do we want to revise anything here? Let's, let's be a little more sure of ourselves. That six, is that really a six? Maybe it's a seven. It's really kind of in between the two. And again, you don't need to do this all with one key. If you're not sure, write down in your notes that you're not sure. Is that a six? Is that a seven? Well, maybe you try both. That four, I mean, I, the four, the second one to the end of the key, that's the real hard one for us. I think we could try six or seven here. That four, that could be a three, that could be a four, could even be a five for all I know. It's just very blurry. But if you have a key, and let's say you're trying a key in a target door, and it doesn't work at a three cut, well, you don't have to throw the key away. You just grab your, your key nippers, your punch, or your hand file, you punch it down to four, try it again. Try it down to five, punch it down again. That three, I kind of like that three. I'm not sure about that four. So we've got ourselves the best notes we can get, and then you're off to your target. Now, am I recommending that any of you go to T-Pain's new restaurant and start cutting keys in the parking lot and try throwing them in the door? No. Let me be very clear. I am not recommending that. But I am saying this is a fun case study, and we can check our work. I'm saying we could just get, bounce over to keygen.co, which is a very useful website, especially for people who want to 3D print keys. It will generate STL files for all various types of keys that you might want to generate. But we don't even need to 3D print this. What if we just take a little screenshot of that, import it into Photoshop, and see how close this perfectly generated key is to what T-Pain is holding up in his photograph from Twitter. I'm going to drop it in here. Again, we got to do a little resizing action. But it's looking pretty good. I realize the bow of the key is different, of course. He got his key from a locksmith. Ours is with a standard Schlage bow. But as we start sizing this down, what do you think? You think we, think we might have made the, the key to T-Pain's new spot? Let's bring it on over. How do we, how do we look? Goddamn. Goddamn, I think, I think we might have something there. So get ourselves, uh, get ourselves some free drinks. Party time!
All we do is win, win, win. That's what you could do if you learn how to do this, right? Again, this is not me telling you to come take our classes or anything. All this information's out there online. And it's not like I'm poking fun and throwing shade here. I mean, T-Pain knows this as well. He responded, he's like, yeah, what are you gonna do? Go in and steal my bar stools before the place is occupied? We're going to have a locksmith change the locks. But it's a great lesson. It's a great little example of how this can work. It's a great example of why you should always change your locks when you get a new place and please, Stop tweeting your keys if you're not planning to do that. All right, hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed this, and most of all, I hope you stay safe out there.